Doom, doom. What am I supposed to do without your love? Oh, hi, James from Ingvid, and welcome, future native speakers. <sighs> He's making fun of me because he's saying, what are you supposed to do? Because my singing isn't that great, but he's actually bringing up today's lesson. And what we're going to learn today is the modal verb that is used for obligation, expectation, and plans. Supposed to. People sometimes confuse supposed to with must and have to. I've done a lesson on that, so you can go check that out on the website at Ingvid. But today, what we want to work on specifically is supposed to. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to introduce you to the three most common ways people use it and give you examples, okay? And then we're going to do a quiz, of course, to test your knowledge on it. Why is it important? Because supposed to is about plans, and we all know we make plans, from flying to different countries to what we're going to have for dinner. So supposed to will help us make sure you sound more like a native speaker. Are you ready? Let's go to the board. So, what are you supposed to do? Supposed to. Our first meaning we look at is to talk about expectations, what you think should happen. So if you went to a store and you saw this, and you said, $20, it's supposed to be on sale. My expectation was it should be $15, but it's not 15, it's 20. That's more than I expected. And that's where the expectations come in. It's an idea that you've had in your head about a way a thing should be. All right. If you're going on a date, and you go out, oh, sorry, I'm going on a date to meet a woman. I come out, I've seen her on Tinder or whatever. And I look at her and I'm like, whoa, you're supposed to be smaller. Maybe she's 20 feet tall. I'm like, I expected you this tall, not basketball height. Who knows? You never know. Okay. So my example, it was supposed to be on sale. You thought it would be one price, but it's another price. Now, when we talk about obligations. An obligation is similar to an expectation. They are different. An obligation is similar to more like must, something that you should do because you have this job or duty. And because of that, you have certain expectations. Most of us know that if you have a job and you're supposed to be there at 9 a.m., that is an obligation. It's not merely an expectation like, well, we kind of expected it to be, but it could change. That's your job. And if that's difficult to understand, I want you to think about going to a store. Imagine going to the bank. The bank is supposed to be open at 9 a.m. And the bank opens at 10 o'clock. The guy just walks up like, hey, hi, just uh, slept in. You're going to be angry, right? Because it's not an expectation, not just. It's stronger than that. So you're having, you have an obligation to be here on time. Look at all of these people lining up. We've been waiting for you. In this case, you might say, or you would say, you're supposed to be here at this time. It's not just expectation, it's more of a duty. Okay, so it's stronger than the expectation. But it still comes from the family of expectation, right? So you are supposed to pay your taxes on time. In this case, supposed to takes on the idea of must. It, you could say must. But once again, remember this lesson is about teaching you how we more casually use our English. And that's why this lesson goes from a beginner lesson to an intermediate, because you've got more of an understanding to use it more appropriately. You're supposed to be on time, Johnson. You can say you must be on time, but clearly they weren't on time. So you say you're supposed to, because that's part of your obligation. Cool? So we notice how expectation is going, morphing or changing into an obligation, something stronger. Now, number three, we say, to say, I have heard or people believe something to be true. And you're kind of going, what do you mean, I have heard? Or That's a confusing sentence. Well, I have heard means people have told me, right? I heard you. I heard a sound. People have told me. So I have heard this is true. We can also say it's a different way of saying people believe, so they tell other people. For instance, I have heard that Paris is a romantic city. Or you can say... What, what is it? Paris is supposed to be a romantic city, see? And then once again, it goes back to that expectation thing we were talking about at the beginning. Because people have said it, you expect it. 
It's not an obligation for Paris to be romantic. It is not the city of love just because you think it is. No, it is your expectation, not our obligation. <laughs> That's my best French accent. <laughs> okay, so it's something that people believe to be true, but it doesn't have to be, but people talk about it. So you expect it or you believe it, okay? Because you have heard it or people believe it. So these are the three most common, as I discussed at the beginning, things that people use supposed to for. And this is how you're su uh oh, I'm about to say it. You're supposed to use it, expected to use it, right? Okay, so what is this supposed to? How do we write it? Just because I said it and you're like, okay, I get it. What is the form? So let's discuss the form and the pronunciation of it, okay? I'm going to teach you how to, pro how to pronounce it. We'll get the proper pronunciation because there are two. But let's go to the board and look at the form. In red, I have verb to be, supposed, and then I got two verb base. And if you don't know what that is, that is the infinitive form. When you have the preposition to before a verb in the base, it's especially with a modal verb in front of it, it is the infinitive form. So we have the verb to be, supposed, and it has to have a D, and I'll explain why in a second or two, and then the infinitive form of the next verb. I'm supposed to meet my friend for dinner. You were supposed to be here an hour ago. You're supposed to go home. That is the form. Now, when we say it in the present or future, we can use this and we will use the verb to be in its appropriate form for the pronoun. So if the pronoun is I, then it's am. If it's he, she, it, it's is. They, we, and are. All right, so that's are. So we are supposed to see my friend. I am supposed to see my friend. She is supposed to see her friend. Right? If it's the future, you use the same form and you would say, I am supposed to see my friend tonight. That's in the future. Easy enough, right? And it's that expectation or, yeah, in this case, expectation for this sentence. Now, what, I'm, what happens if you want to say something negative? Well, we're going to have to put a negative form in it. And that form is going to take the form of not, which I didn't write. I didn't want it too confusing, but we'll put it here, not. And we put the not with the verb to be. So we don't put it with the verb at the base, we put it with the verb to be, so we change it. So the test, it wasn't supposed to be hard. Hard. We change was, remember we said it was, okay? And this is actually negative and past, so I've done a whammy on you. So before I do that, why don't we go here, then I'll come back to there, okay? So don't look here for a second. Let's go here. Let's do, we did future and present. Let's do the past form. We take the verb to be, and there you go. It's in the past. So I was, he was, she was, they were, we were, okay? You just put that form, and that's the past. This is very specific, and I want to take a second here to explain the past form is a little different than the present form. Present and future means planning ahead. Past form used to mean something has changed. What? I was supposed to meet my friend at the mall. It means I probably didn't meet my friend at the mall. That was the plan, but it has changed. So when someone says to you in the, that this moment, you're standing here and they're standing here, I'm supposed to go home tonight. It means that was the plan. That may change or may have changed. Cool? All right. So look out for it was because something's changing and you have to be aware of it. All right? He was supposed to be the best guy, uh, the best guy for president. Things change. All right. So in this case, I have, I was supposed to be home by now. Am I home? Probably not. That's what there was for. There was a plan for me to be home, but clearly I'm not. Now I'm going to go back to the other form, and I apologize greatly for doing that to you, because I really liked the lesson. It was a good one up until here. But I wanted to show the negative form, because sometimes things change, right? So in this case, something's changed, but it's negative. You could say, here's an example. Uh, it was supposed to be, it, 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 it is supposed to be a nice day today. Sunny, great weather, right? Or you could say, it wasn't supposed to rain. What? Well... Sunny is good weather, rain is bad weather. I can make that negative change by adding not. It wasn't supposed to rain, right? It is supposed to be a nice day. With a sentence on the board, it wasn't supposed to be hard, right? It is supposed to be easy. Flipping it by changing the end of that verb. 
So what I want to say is we've gone over three. Yes, sir, we have... Oh, I almost jumped ahead of myself. I promise you the pronunciation. And you're going to say, what's, what's the big deal? That's what this crazy thing down here is. We actually don't usually say supposed to. And that's why many students spell it incorrectly and they drop off the D because they always hear supposed. When you're speaking quickly, we usually drop the U sound and we also drop the D sound. So it comes out to supposed to. I'm supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this. We're supposed to go. Now, when someone wants to get your attention, they'll say, you were supposed to be at work on time. Don't play around. They're not playing with you. They took the time to say all the sounds. So for fast speech, you'll notice the U and the D gets done or dropped. Cool? So we've gone over the three definitions. Some people break it into four. I think three is sufficient. We've gone over to the present and future form, right? We've gone over the past form, and we've even shown you the negative form. And I went one step further. Negative, the negative past form. Booyah! So it's not a lesson if we don't do our quiz and have a bonus feature in homework, is it? So I'd like you to stay with me. And after, you know, we're supposed to do something a little different or we're supposed to do the test, I want you to do it with me now. And we're back. So we were supposed to do our quiz, which we'll, we'll do now. Do you remember the three meanings for supposed to? Obligation, expectation, and belief. And that is part of what's going to happen in the quiz here as we have three boxes and you're going to try and fill out what should go there, which one, which part of supposed to we're talking about in the meaning. Now, ah, I'm over here. Let's start here. Mr. E says, you must not smoke in here. And James says, okay, because I love a good stogie. Stogie is like cigar. People will talk about stogie. Arnold talks about his stogies. He loves his stogies. All right. So you must not smoke in here. You have two jobs to do. What is it that James is did it to do? And is it obligation, expectation, or belief? Okay. That's right. James isn't supposed to smoke in here. We have not being the negative part of the sentence. We know what supposed to means, right? And uh, what are we, sorry, James isn't supposed to smoke in here. And what is this? Is this obligation, belief, or expectation? Well, if you remember rightly, I put musts when we were talking about obligation. Because it's not just expectation, like I expect you not to. You're not supposed to. And we know must, like have to, is necessity, right? So in this case, obligation. You're not supposed to. It's like a rule or law. What about this one? Two. Many people believe that Oxford is the best university in the world. How would you write that? Sorry, let's just put this here before I forget. How would you write that? All right, so it is Oxford Oxford is supposed to be the best university in the world. Now, I tried to help you here by saying something, and if you can pick it out, you'll know if this is obligation, belief, or expectation. What word should help you here? That's correct. Believe. So this is a belief that people hold. Now, of course, if you're from Harvard, <laughs> you probably want to argue with that one, but let's just say Oxford for now, okay? Now, 
Can I do this? Just as a quick question to see if you remember the grammar and how it's supposed to be structured. Can I put supposed to like that? No. Now, what we said was people may say it like that very quickly. It's supposed to be, but you do not write it like that. You need the D, okay? Just like we don't add an ing or an s here. When we say supposed to, it's in the passive voice. So we use the verb to be, supposed to be, and then sorry, supposed to with the infinitive. Good. I'm glad you remember the grammar and I'm glad you remember what the meanings are. So we're going back over that. Now for the final one, you should get it because there's only one left, but this is a tough one. My girlfriend shouldn't be here. She should be at work at this time. <gasps> Maybe somebody's up to something bad. Naughty person. You're not supposed to be doing that. But what sentence would you write? And what part of the meaning of supposed to are we looking at? All right, so let's do it. Wow, it's a long sentence. It's a long sentence, but we got the point. And I'm going to fill this in because I already know you should know this one already, right? You should know this one. Oh, you know what? And I, I put the S too close, so I should do this. She's, she's supposed to. Okay, she's supposed to be at work. But what is it? It's going to be expectation. And for those of you who are confused, why is this expectation not obligation? Because she's at work. Well, I think it has nothing to do with her work. I am not her boss talking. Maybe I'm her boyfriend and I expect her to be at work at 12 o'clock except she's home. But what am I doing that I'm afraid? <gasps> to be continued. <laughs> All right. So we look at it and I've used it twice. My girlfriend isn't supposed to be here. Now we know that is a negative use. So we use the negative, right? And then she's supposed to be at work at this time. So we use the positive. Both are in the positive, uh, sorry, in the present form, right? So we talked about a change in plans. Remember we talked about that? So there was a change in the plan. She's supposed to be at work and she's not supposed to be here now, my expectation. So we've covered all the things we talked about. We have three examples of obligation, oh sorry, one example each of obligation, belief, and expectation. And now I would like to give you a couple other things. Well, some phrases you can use with supposed to that will help to round out your English. Because as I said, why we're learning this is because it's about planning. And in this case, you can see there's a change in the plan. And a lot of people say this instead of have to or must, like I have to go to work, I'm supposed to go to work, is more common. So I would like to give you a couple of phrases, three to be exact, that can help to fill out your use of supposed to so you can use this modal verb like you're supposed to. Oh yeah, I like it too. So let's move to the bonus section of the video and I'm going to explain other uses of supposed to that are used commonly when we talk about our duties. Uh, we can talk about frustration and the purpose of something. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? Notice this question and frustration. It's, there was a, okay, a perfect example was there was a guy I know named Matt and uh, he was a pretty decent guy because he would help out with the photocopier. And he could have said it like this, like, what am I supposed to do? But he didn't used to do that. And I'll explain. Because his classroom was right by our photocopier and it would break down a lot. And a lot of the times the teachers would be complaining and this and that making noise. And Matt would come out and help fix it. Now he could have said it because it happened regularly. Like, what am I supposed to do? Do I look like the Xerox guy? But he didn't do that. He would just help them. But a lot of times people would use frustration if it's a questioning frustration. If someone is asking them and saying, 
this photocopier doesn't work and I'm just another teacher. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? It's not my job. And that's that frustration. As much as it seems like a question, it's a frustration that it's not my responsibility or obligation to do something. Matt, I hope you're doing well because you helped us a lot with that photocopier. Now, we can ask this same question, what am I supposed to do? But we can use it in line of duty. What's your job or responsibility? So you come in and they go, okay, uh, Daniel's going to be doing this. Josh will be doing this. And I go and go, so what am I supposed to do? What is my job in all of this? In this case, it's not frustration. It's what do you expect of me or what would you like me to do? So what am I supposed to do? Sit over there? Okay. Cool, right? Next, we can say it is what does something do? But we would say, what is this supposed to do? So you get rid of this and you go, what is it supposed to do? What is this supposed to do? You could turn around and I'm looking around at this. Oh, interesting. What is this supposed to do? Notice I said supposed. Remember I said we dropped the U and the D. I use that. What is this supposed to do? Meaning is what is its function? What is its purpose? Tell the weather? Tell the time? I don't know. You tell me. What is it supposed to do? Cool. So now I've given you the three meanings of supposed to in verb. I've given you three different ways you can use it in conversation to, I want to say elicit, and elicit means get more information from someone or something. As in frustration, you can let people know you're frustrated when something's not your obligation, right? What am I supposed to do about it? Do I look like I'm uh, the, the, the Prime Minister or President, the Prime Minister or President of Canada? <laughs> President of the United States or the Prime Minister of Canada? Oh, wow, too much TV. What do you expect of me? So what am I supposed to do? Uh, help with the guys over there or would you like me to work over there? So you're asking me, what is my duty in this situation? And then we can say, what is the purpose of something? What is it supposed to do? Is it supposed to be an air conditioner? Is it supposed to be a computer? What is it? Now, I've given you your test. I think you did rather well, remembering what the three meanings of supposed to are and how we can use it. I've given you some bonus material. And as always, you have some homework. So what does Mr. E want you to do? Well, it says fill in what is supposed to be done. And I want you to fill this in underneath the com in the comment section, either here or in Ingvid or wherever you're watching this particular video. Okay. The first one is Mr. E says, you were supposed to like this video. I give it a thumbs up and you say, okay, now I want you to do it. <laughs> I know tricky, huh? All right. But now you know how it works. It's good. The second thing is Mr. E, sa Mr. e says, is, you are supposed to write out three sentences with supposed to. And I would like to add, I would like you to try to use at least the meaning or the intention of obligation of belief or expectation and try and show that you know the difference. Cool? All right. Well, I want to say before I go, I've got a quote for you. And because this lesson was about supposed to an obligation, here's a quote you might like. You were born with three obligations and only three. That is to live, to love, and to be happy. And before I take off, I'd like to say, please go visit Ingvid, and that's www.ing as in English, vid as in video.com. And before you go, I'm sure you've already hit the like button, or I hope you have, because you stayed this long, right? It means you must like the video, you're at the end. Hit the subscribe button, and there's a little bell there. If you hit that, that's for notification, which means when you hit that, any new video I do will be brought right to your attention, and it doesn't matter what device you're using. So hit that if you want to know when my next video is coming out. I'm supposed to get going right now, and I hope you, uh, you were supposed to learn something from this lesson. You have a great one, and as I say, future native speakers. See you soon.